Because of that, over the weekend, and indeed this morning, we have been in consultation with our colleagues to enable us to approach this outstanding business in unison and in unity. Unfortunately, we got to some extent and we differed on two camps. One had to do with the e levy matter and the other to do with the procedure to attend to what we consider an impropriety about what happened last Friday. The House, as you do know, was purported last Friday to have taken a decision on the budget. It was to the effect that Parliament had rejected the economic policy and budget statement of the government for the 2022 financial year. On our part, we considered it as a nullity because it did not meet the provisions of Article 104 of the Constitution, which is fortified by our old standing orders, Order 109. On these two counts, what was done, the perfectly done, was a flagrant violation of our own orders and the Constitution. And we thought that as a House, we should come to some determination on this together. Because, colleagues, this is not the first time such a thing has come before the House. I refer us to something that happened during the day of the Honorable Do Ajaho as the Speaker of the House. A decision had been made by the House and Ajaho, Right Honorable Do Ajaho, came with a statement who should have informed the speaker about what he did. And I'm quoting from a ruling of the Supreme Court which they extracted from our own hands. And I'm quoting the president in the house. Indeed, this is not the first time the house is facing this problem. The speaker should have followed the president set by his predecessors. When a similar issue arose in the 6th Parliament on the 22nd of December 2015, the then first Deputy Speaker of Parliament, Honorable Ebo Bartin Odro, after reading Order 1091 of the Standing Orders, ruled that the whole voting process was an exercise in futility. It's akin to what we just did. Later in the day, the Speaker, Right Honorable Edward Kobe Do Ajaho, again ruled on the same matter as follows. And I'm quoting what Ajaho also said. Honorable members, you are aware that this House is not supreme. We are subject to the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. The rule is that where the Constitution has made a provision for regulation of the business of the House, they take precedence over any other, indeed, the standing orders of this house. There is quorum to do business. That is according to Jaho, who understood the imperatives of our rules, our statutes, and our constitution. He says there is quorum to do business, and that is one third of the house, and there is quorum to take a decision. 
So we need to draw a distinction between the quorum to do business and the quorum to take a decision. The quorum to take a decision is regulated by Article 1041. The fundamental question is, and I'm still quoting Ajahu, is that the time that the vote was taken, did we have at least half of the honorable members present? It is a constitutional issue which has been captured by Standing Order 1091 of the, our Standing Orders. If you go by the results of the headcount, and there had been a headcount, by adding 67 to 66, we will get 133. Therefore, there is a serious constitutional issue here. So at the time that the votes were taken, this house lacked the legal, in fact, the constitutional capacity to take a decision. So I entirely endorse the position taken by the first honorable, the, uh, the honorable first deputy speaker, that we do not have the number, constitutionally speaking, to take a decision. Therefore, in accord, in respect of this, no decision has been taken. That's the question. So nobody is manufacturing this from anywhere. It has happened before in the sixth parliament, and there is a record of this. So, compatriots, what we have done is just to recognize the fact that what happened on that day was a complete violation of the constitution. We cannot stand the test of any constitutional test, or even the test of our own standing orders. So, it's the reason why we say that it is a nullity, it is void, and it's of no effect. What we did today is to indeed recognize that something happened. That what happened really was a nullity and illegality. So, what we did today was to reinstate, so to speak, the original motion and have a properly constituted house take a vote on it. And as you have seen, the decision is that we have approved of the motion moved by the minister responsible for finance who, representing the, uh, the president, submitted to this house the budget statement and economic policy of the government for the year ending December 31st, 2022. That, in short, is what we have done. So for emphasis, the budget of 2022 was never rejected by the House. And today, the record has been set free.